I'd like to introduce the Steroglass Rotary Evaporator. This is one of the products that we represent here in the United States. And this is a high safety rotary evaporator for industrial process chemistry. This consists of a 50 liter evaporation vessel, condensing unit, receiver flasks. A couple of the other features that it has, a pressure relief valve, in case we are to overpressurize the system. It also has a lot of instrumentation, temperature for vapor temperature, pressure to sense vacuum. This is a fill valve to fill the evaporation flask. This is a valve that can blanket the, the evaporation flask and the whole unit with nitrogen. The entire unit is also driven by a industrial scale PLC. This PLC can control vacuum, rotation speed, temperature of the water, and also because of the vapor temperature can control the process. We have here hosing for the glycol or coolant fluid that would go into the condenser, and this is how the vacuum is applied to the unit. It's on wheels, so it's portable, and it's also designed with a tremendous amount of safety features as well. So if the operator were to inadvertently open the doors while it's in, in process, it would shut down. If the bath heats up too much, it would shut down. If for some reason the motor stops rotating the vessel, it would shut down. All of these are high safety features in order to protect the process as well as the operator. Let's look now at the control system. Anytime you're ready. Okay. Let's look a little closer at the Strike 5000. First thing you notice is, of course, it's made of all borosilicate glass. All wetted parts are either borosilicate or Teflon, so it's completely corrosion resistant and offers high purity. One of the main components of the condensing system is this high efficiency, high heat transfer area coil condensing unit. The coil condenser takes the vapors, condenses them to a liquid, and then it is sent onward by via gravity to the receiver vessels. Here you see the vacuum is applied at this point. Once we go into the receivers, we can control the receivers individually with these valves. So as one fills up, we can take it offline and we can drain it. The caps of the receiving vessels also have a valve as well as a secondary port which is capped off. Underneath the receiving vessels, we have drain valves. So all along, these can be metered because everything is graduated. Down below, we see the, the utilities beyond, behind the utility panel we'll show you in a moment. But what you're looking at here are the explosion proof solenoid valve and the inlet and outlet hoses which are insulated that allow the coolant media either glycol or some other form of cooling fluid into the heat exchanger or coil condenser. Let's look at the utility panel. Here you see the utility panel. This utility panel can come as standard with hose barb connections or ANSI flange connections as you see here. These flanges allow you to bolt any. By pushing F4, we raise the heating bath, which is obviously raised hydraulically. And now we're applying heat to the vessel. So obviously we are, we are offering now a gentle method of heating with vacuum applied, we reduce the boiling temperature and allow the solvents to start evaporating off. We can also move the vessel down wherever we like it, stop it along the way. So, and there's another way to control how much heat we're putting into the evaporation vessel. 